Welcome to Inside Care Plus. My name is Brad Sandlands and welcome to Volume 5. Um, back here in the Quality Insight Studio 1. Uh, for those that like and uh, really appreciate what we're trying to do with the information shared, please like and subscribe on uh, YouTube or on comments on LinkedIn. Uh, really appreciate any feedback on the, the commentary and the information that we share on this platform. Um, it's been a pretty pivotal week for aged care, as we know through Parliament um, in passing the, the new Aged Care Act. Uh, and I'm sure over the next couple of weeks and months, there's going to be plenty of information disseminated um, across the network as to what's going to take place, uh, particularly um, in the detail around entry, uh, which is a, the piece that we're really interested here at Quality Insight. Um, we saw a long time ago, and I'm talking four years ago this month, we started this business. Uh, we saw the need to, to help admissions people, uh, facility, care home managers, general managers, whatever their title is now, um, we saw a need to, to help instruct them not only about the content of how to enter into residential aged care, but also how to connect with people. Um, we do a lot of focus on communication style, how personality uh, affects that decision-making tree and then that, um, that connection with the multiple people that you were talking to at any one time. Uh, we really deep dive um, into how people learn. Um, it's critical to, to get a really good understanding quickly on residential aged care. Most people spend an hour with you to make that decision. Um, and as Paul Murphy and I talk about in our training, uh, people will take longer to select a gardener than they will to, um, to select a care home. So you've really got to try and get that information into people um, as concisely and transparently and connect with them as quickly as you can um, because it's quite stressful and, and people will make decisions. And the earlier or, or more obtuse they are in their decision-making process, that can lead to more um, complaints and problems down the track. So we try and install in every delegate that we train um, the methodology of know your stuff, know your facts, know where to draw the line, but also know and be aware of communication styles, personality, nonverbal communication cues, how all that can affect. Um, so that sort of leads me into the, the first bit that we want to talk about for 2025 is we are doing in January 22nd at 9 a.m. another online course um, we just did one recently and went really well. A couple of tech issues with microphones, but I think we've sorted that out here at our Quality Insights Studio. But essentially, um, the the feedback from the delegate group was that this is training they haven't seen before. And we know that from um, the well over 1,500 people that we've trained either face-to-face -face or online through this methodology. Now, why would an aged care provider get some sales training now as opposed to wait for the, the new act information? The, the detail is just one part of this training. The, the training really, as I said before, the training deep dives into all those other soft skills that you need to have as a salesperson in selling any service or product. Um, I know sales is a dirty word, word in this industry, but I'll come back to it again. It is the, the process of showcasing and explaining how a service or product works in exchange for funds. That's a sale. So that's what we're going on about. We're not trying to talk people into it or do the best deal or any of these sort of things. It's really that we've got a lot of facts that we need to share with people. They need to be able to understand these facts really clearly and how they uh, work for them in their individual case, because each case can be quite different. And them to understand why the fees and charges are the way they are. So it's really important to make sure we've got that connection. And that's what this training does. The online training is a really soft touch in that it is only three hours. It's a, it's a three hour course, but um, when you get to the face to face, there's a lot more in-depth workshop that we do and really focusing on you take the skill and you learn it and you showcase it and you practice it within that safe setting. And that way you're not unleashed out onto the, uh, the general public um, trying out new skills or trying to develop a script, if you like, um, on how to do these things. Um, the next bit that's gonna be really key for us next year is our CareBridge program. So CareBridge is that communication portal between the hospital health network and the aged care provider. Again, being the position that we are, we can really sit back and have a look and, and say, look, what are the critical pieces of aged care entry that are missing right now? And one of the big ones is the transference of information from the hospital network through to the aged care provider. Um, each aged care provider has some different spins on what information that they want but essentially 80% of it's all pretty much the same. Uh, what CareBridge aims to do is provide that conduit 
So the, the right information is channeled through to the aged care provider for them to make a really good concise decision on the entry of that person from a clinical perspective. Um, they can also use that as a communication pathway to request more information. The hospital network on their side of the fence gets to save a ton of time in follow-up phone calls, um, reaching out to providers that actually suit the need that that person has, because the CareBridge portal has um, different parameters in there that you can really finite down what the, the care entry level needs to be, so single bed with ensuite, um, dementia secure, memory support secure, um, LA bariatric, what are the other complex care needs that are required? You can hone down onto the, the providers that will cater for that um, and have a vacancy for that or have a pending vacancy. So it's really important. Stay tuned, we're gonna announce soon also a symposium with aged care um, so that we can really narrow down what is critical bits of information for the hospital to know. And also let's get the transparency and the trust built back up in the network again. Um, over the last couple of years, it has been eroded through information coming through that's not quite correct. And we've got aged care providers that just aren't following up and giving feedback immediately as to what's going on. So we're trying to build that and that's what CareBridge is about. Um, so that uh, hopefully will be up and launched in the, in the early uh, calendar year of 2025. The other bit, and it is a little bit left of field, is scheduling and additional services. We know through the new Aged Care Act that there is gonna be some changes around what it is. Um, there's speculation as to the, the, the detail, um, but that won't really be confirmed until probably end of February, early March next year. Um, but what we do know is there's change. But also you need to be able to highlight and show the, the services have been completed now. You need to do that now. So it's not even a July 25 thing. It's a thing that needs to be done now. The other thing that's really difficult when you look at additional services is the scheduling of your staff uh, to make sure they're doing it. And then the rescheduling, if there's a sick um, or a, an unforeseen circumstance that a service couldn't be delivered, um, that it then needs to be rescheduled. That's what Schedule Me does. So again, um, the beauty of being eyes open in this industry and working at the coalface, uh, where Quality Insight are able to look at these things and, and look for where there's a potential gap. We looked around, there was no other software developer that's got anything close to what's required. We've gone out and developed it. Um, it will be continue to be developed as we run through because there'll be stuff that needs to be updated and, and uh, worked through. But uh, we're very proud of the fact that with CareBridge and Schedule Me, that we've got two products that we've looked at the feedback of the industry. Uh, we've looked at the stuff we've done around mystery shopping and sales training, the work we've done with uh, bed placement, uh, the work we've done with, with Queensland Health in particular um, around what their needs are. And we've developed these things. So they're, um, they're, they're things that uh, should be able to assist this industry moving forward into its next phase. And um, the, the theme that I see coming through in the New Age Care Act is transparency. And both of these platforms have it in spades. So um, something that we're really proud of. Um, plenty coming up for us. We're still obviously doing mystery shops. Um, we're still obviously doing face-to-face -face sales training. Um, those are two key pillars for us. And I see into the next year, uh, particularly in the mystery shopping vein of things, that um, that's going to continue to be a, a real area that uh, providers need to be looking at. Um, we're more than happy to do as many as we need to and as few as we need to. Um, it is one of those areas that we see that that data is so rich for a, um, an aged care provider to be looking at um, that they can make real decisions on what their next steps are, particularly in that aged care entry space. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, for those that are listening to the recording, again, if you like what you hear, uh, please like and subscribe to, to YouTube. Uh, on LinkedIn, please comment on that. Um, again, it's really valuable to get feedback as to if you think the content delivered is, is what you need to hear. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, 2025. Um, I know the Act has got a ton of work in it. Um, there's lots to learn and lots to do, but I think it's a, a step forward um, in some way to, to help improve that consumer experience and also give us as an industry some, some better guideline principles to operate within. Um, there's a lot of providers out there doing a great job, a, a really good job. So um, this Aged Care Act should hopefully enhance what they do and confirm that, that they're in the right space. Um, aged Care Entry, it's going to be a little bit trickier, but it's also one of those spaces that needs to be done properly and it needs to have some investment put into it now um, in terms of a training aspect 
and development of those admissions people and possibly looking at restructuring of how an entry workforce looks. Uh, and again, we're more than happy to have a no obligation free um, discussion around what that looks like. And if there's stuff there we can help you with, we would love to. Um, thanks again for listening to Inside Chat. Uh, I'm Brad Sandlands. Um, we'll be joining you very soon. Thanks again.